Now it's snowing. How delightful. Yep, just gonna stay inside all day now. Hello, uh, I am Chanel, also known as Piper Nell around most of the internet, and just quick intro, I'm taking apart sweaters to learn about how to design garments for reusability. More on that in maybe a separate video, but I just want to get out this before video for my second sample or specimen that I'll be taking apart. I'm trying to record before and after videos for each sweater to just kind of capture my thoughts on um, like first impressions of each garment and then kind of a reflection on like what I learned during the process. So today we have my first commercially knit garment. So I have this Ann Taylor 100% cotton sweater. It's pretty cute. I mean, I like it. So I, I picked it because I was interested in the yarn. I personally would not wear this kind of sweater if maybe... I like the boat neck, I like the ribbing. If maybe it was a baggier, um, if it was a baggier silhouette and kind of a wider bo boat neck, I might wear it as a nice like outer layer or like a nice spring transitional sweater. But anyway, I'm interested in uh, getting some nice cotton yarn. It looks about DK weight. So when I was posting about my first experiment with a hand knit uh, sweater and I asked people if they had any questions that I would answer and I thought one question that would be good to answer at this point in my learning process is how I've been how I picked the sweater since I did pick out a bunch um, on my first trip to the Goodwill store this I got for a dollar because that day was green tags were all a dollar it's great the first sweater that I took apart was the only one that I found that was hand knit. No, wait, no, there's another one coming up. Um, but anyway, this one I thought was a good candidate for taking apart because of its seams. And from what, from the reading and little research that I've done before I started this project, that should be the major deciding factor for picking a thrifted garment uh, to unravel. So if you see here, that is what the seams on this piece look like. They look, um, if you've done mattress stitch before on a hand knit, it looks pretty similar um, to what that looks like. So that means that this piece was knit in pieces and then seamed. It was not knit as a large piece of, it was not cut from a large piece of knit fabric and then sewed or surged. So I have an example here of a knit, uh, of a knit top that I like wearing, but this is clearly surged. You can see that there's thread um, going on the edge of the seam. And I'm not a sewist, but I know that um, I have some limited experience with surging like handwoven pieces and a surging machine will kind of slice your fabric as you, as you seam it to give you that nice like won't fall apart edge. I don't know if this process is mechanized at all, but it does look like this yarn wasn't cut during the finishing process. So all the seams look like that. So that's why I thought it'd be a good candidate for taking apart. And that's basically it. Again, I'm going to be doing some reverse engineering right from the beginning to, because I found that it does help the unraveling process to figure out where to start. You want to start at where you just want to reverse the order of how the sweater was created so it makes sense to figure out where they started, where they finished, and you find their finishing point and you start there and work backwards. So with this piece, obviously it's seamed. I see that there are four pieces. There's the front and the back and then a piece for each of the sleeves. The sleeves were also seamed, so there's um, the seam is on the underside of the arm. And I can see that all of the pieces were knit from the bottom up. And that's where I've been getting... So the ribbing is really my major indication of which direction it was knit. Because you see here, if you look at the bottom edge, the V's of the knits are vertical. 
and so that's how you can tell what direction the ribbing was knit in. If this was all stockinette, I don't really know how I would tell. I think I just have I think I would have to look at a different detail, I guess. And the sleeve cuffs are also the same. I'm really interested in the cast on method that they use. I don't I'm also kind of using this as a little peek into commercial knit garment production. I don't know anything about industrial knitting. Um, and I'd love to learn, but I don't know where to start. So I figured, you know, start looking at the products of industrial knitting. I really do like this boat neck. It has a bit of shaping. And the ribbing also brings out the shaping on the, uh, on kind of the sleeve joins. This is probably a set-in sleeve, giving you that nice fitted look. And I really wonder, like... Yeah, what they used for the seaming thread versus the knitting yarn. And I think that's that's all I have for now on the construction. I'm imagining with commercially knit garments, the constructions aren't going to be as varied because the more just the more automated and more commercialized your production gets, the more efficient it is to just stick to a few different techniques and a few standard constructions, but I could be wrong. So my game plan for this unraveling is to just uh, try to unpick the seams. I, if I can't find the ends that they weave in, I don't know how you would, I don't know how they weave in ends in an industrial setting, but I'm gonna, it's probably gonna require me snipping some of the seams and I'm just gonna do my best to not, to snip the yarn or thread that they used in the seam and not the yarn that went into knitting the piece. And I think that's it. So yeah, I'll be taking notes like I was last time in the Google Doc, which I'll link in the notes. And let's see how this goes.